What's good YouTube? I'm Max Robinson. I intend to help physically challenged men become more masculine. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to effectively choose your next motability car. Step one is establish your requirements. Uh, I'm going to be doing more than just reading from the screen, but these are like prompts for me to read as well. Um, so yeah, analyze the car that you're driving or learning to drive in and establish the pros and cons, decide what's essential for you and what's not. Do you have a family? Do you need a manual or automatic? Do you need a specific gear stick layout? And that's a nod to my last week's video. Go and watch that if you're interested in automatic gear sticks, right? Um, do you need adaptations? Do you need wheelchair space, like a, a large boot to accommodate a wheelchair? I asked a couple of different uh, manufacturers and they said that um, if you want your car to be picked up and dropped back to you, uh, when it goes in for servicing uh, that's possible usually for most manufacturers if you live within two miles of the dealership so I have it with my Mercedes and they literally come to your door every time you need a service or an MOT or work done on your car anything at all they'll come to your door a dr with a driver a driver will pick up your keys from you from your front door they'll drive your car to the garage get whatever work needs to be done on it and then drive back uh, so literally all you need to do is walk to your front door and hand the keys and receive the keys and that's it and most uh, manufacturers do that not only Mercedes but you have to be within two miles of them uh, as a general rule of thumb they can't build you left-hand drive cars uh, on the motability scheme and the reason why I asked that is because I was thinking if I had a left-hand drive car I could use whatever gear stick was in that with my right hand and that solves my issue that I have uh, but no they can't do that so they won't build a left hand car uh, left hand drive car for you unfortunately but that's understandable they did say though that if you are considering getting an electric car then Motability will install electric charger outside your house so you won't have to lay out anything which I thought was great. Okay, moving on. Step two is determine your budget. And you should do this before you look at any of the cars. Some cars are zero pound advance payment, so you don't have to spend money. But I will say you're investing in yourself for the next three years. So it's a big investment and there's no better investment than investing in yourself. You are the most important thing because it's your life that you're living no one else lives your life for you and like the the prompt says my c-class was three thousand pounds and this was six years ago admittedly because i extended my lease <clears throat> but anyway at the time three thousand pounds seemed like a lot of money to lay out uh, and it is a lot uh, for some people it might seem like a lot for you but if i look back now even if i kept the car for a three year period it works out at £1,000 per year, right? That's the way you need to look at it. Step three is browse your options online. Uh, visit the Motability website. I'm going to do this uh, and show you exactly how to do it. Uh, browse the cars that meet your requirements from step one and your budget from step two. So you combine step one and step two to get an idea of what's available. And the Motability website, very easy to use. Obviously, type in motability.co.uk click search for a car and then it has all of these uh, options here that you choose from uh, so I'll do this as if uh, I was doing it for myself I'd get rid of manual uh, I don't really want a, a diesel anymore the one bad thing about my C-Class is it's a diesel it could have been petrol so ideally I want a petrol car right get rid of all these I don't want a small car so I want everything apart from a small car. Uh, I don't need seven seats. I don't mind having four seats. I don't mind the number of doors. I don't really care about the boot size. Yeah, the engine size doesn't matter too much either. So there we go, like, oh, and obviously you need to put your budget in, right? So whatever it is for you, 
let's just put 1,500 and uh, now. Okay, so you put in all of your factors that you've decided from step one and step two, find cars. Okay, so now it gives you a, a look at uh, the least expensive cars in order to, and then increasing to the highest, the most expensive. There's nine pages, go to the last page and see like, you know, quite a range of prices, quite a range of different types of cars, and you can sort it by however you like, right? Very easy to use. Okay, the next step is make a note on your phone. So the requirements and the features that you desire, you've already established. And this is what it looked like for me. This was a screenshot that I took on my phone. You're creating this page on your phone in preparation, right? So you want to have it ready to use for when you visit the car dealerships, okay? So you want to have space to write the make, the model, the advance payment to make sure it's within your budget. With the deposit, the only manufacturer that asked me for a deposit was Audi and they only asked for £250. So I would say uh, if you have £250 available for yourself, you don't need to write down uh, deposit. Uh, so then after that, you want to put down the features that you uh, desire or require, right? And for me, this was gear stick, hold assist, reversing camera, sat nav, heated seats, okay? Uh, for you, this is going to look like something different. This is going to look like whatever you decide you need for your car. Okay, so you can write down, I don't know, uh, boot space, um, the height of the car from the ground, whatever it is for you, right? It's a good idea to, to make a note of the engine size and miles per gallon because if a car has all of the things that you require uh, and if a car is of a similar price, then the engine size and the miles per gallon might be a determining factor, right? So it's a good idea to make a note of these as well. Um, and a uh, space to write anything extra, uh, which might come up. It's always good to um, plan for the anomalies, right? So yeah, you make this note on your phone, which means that you are now ready for the next step, which is visit the car dealerships. And as men, we want to go out and be able to move. So visit the dealerships. It's worth pushing through the pain like the literal physical pain. It hurts a lot to move if you have chronic pain or you're recovering from injury or you have uh, mobility issues, right? Push through the pain, go and choose a car because it gives you freedom for the next three years. So it's worth pushing for. You wanna explore all of your options. You never know what's available. Uh, so, wow, nine years ago, uh, I had an Astra on the Motability Scheme. And I was on my way to work. I used to work night shifts at uh, a hotel, right? And I was a minute away from work. And this guy in a mini pulls out in front of me from a side turning. And I had like barely any time to react at all. So I crashed into the back of this guy's mini because he was an idiot and pulled out. Um, <laughs> and I literally had to call my friend. <laughs> my friend likes to act all silly on the phone sometimes, sometimes not all the time, right? <laughs> but he, he done like a silly impression and I was like, no dude, like I've just been in an accident. I need you to come and uh, pick me up, man. <laughs> and he's like, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, I crashed my Astra. The point is yeah, it got written off. As a consequence, it was time for me to choose my next car. I was actually very content with keeping my Astra. I loved the Astra. I was gonna choose to extend to the lease on it. That was my my plan. But because I got written off, I thought, like, okay, uh, time to look for my next car. And I went with my the same friend who picked me up. I went with him uh, to look for my next car. And we were at this, this massive area where all the car dealerships are in the same location, right? You probably have a similar uh, place near you. Okay. And uh, I was parked kind of near Mercedes on uh, like the, a side road and he said oh go into Mercedes and I'm like <laughs> yeah okay mm, because uh, because I'm gonna be able to afford a Mercedes uh, okay mm, mm, right and he's like no no go you never know man you never know and I'm like okay uh, for curiosity's sake let's go let's see what Mercedes have to offer and I, I couldn't believe it um, at the time uh, the Mercedes A-Class 
only had a deposit of five hundred pounds, so I got it, and uh, the rest is history, right? I've been driving Mercedes ever since. I had that A class for three years, and now I've had a C class for six years, and nothing compares to the uh, the layout. Mercedes is amazing. Watch the video, you know. Um, so anyway, the point of that is you don't know what's out there, and the anomaly could present itself. And you could be surprised at what you can get. So go everywhere and explore all of your options. And while you're doing that, take pictures on your phone to remind yourself and to compare with the next options that you choose, right? So, like I said, when you are visiting these dealerships, you're writing down and filling out this, uh, this note. So you've gone to the dealerships, You've written down all of these uh, things about your car. And I should have mentioned, you write this down and then you copy and paste this and you have like five or six or seven, however many you need, and you fill it in as you go. So you fill it in with the details of whatever car you've looked at. You might look at two cars, two different Audis, for example, right? You might say Audi model A3 and then the Audi model Q2 underneath it, right? So you have all of the details for all of the cars. Yeah. So you visited the car dealerships, you've got all of your notes written down on your phone. The next step is to create a spreadsheet and compare your options. So transfer the notes you've written down on your phone either onto an Excel spreadsheet or if you don't have that, use a piece of paper, you know? It's not the most ideal it's definitely more optimal to have a spreadsheet uh, but if you don't know how to use Excel which really isn't that hard to be fair like we'll learn how to use Excel in, in about half an hour very simple right but if you don't know how to use Excel get a piece of paper if you do know how to use Excel or similar uh, programs make a spreadsheet for yourself so you write down all of the things that are on your phone here in this column and the make and model of the car up the top, right? This is literally mine from uh, January. The Skoda was the best option. And I only know that this was the best option because I had every other car that was comparable to it along here in these other columns, right? And gradually, as you go, you can be like, oh, okay, the Peugeot 3008, I was looking at that. Nope, I don't need the Peugeot anymore. Eliminate it, right? It's gone from consideration. Uh, so you get rid of what's unnecessary, you keep what could potentially be of use to you, and then you choose the best option. And finally, step seven, the final step, is test drive. Now you have the ability to go and actually get a feel of what's out there and what they actually feel like to drive. This is the fun part, right? You finally, now that you've come to a logical decision, and you know exactly what you want, go out and get it, you know, go out and test drive your next car and then compare if there are any other comparisons that, that, you, um, that you're that you considering, then test drive everything, you know, test drive three or four different cars and uh, have fun with it, get a feel of how they handle, what they're like to operate, how convenient everything is for you. You know, so yeah, now you have the power to effectively choose your next motability car. Go out and do it.